What's going on everyone? Today's Swift snippet is all about refactoring your storyboard. Now we've all been there. We've all seen storyboards that look like this. Just a spaghetti spiderweb mess of segues and tons of views everywhere. And this is what gives storyboards their bad name. A lot of people say they're, they're take too long to load, they're laggy. Uh, another big complaint is that it's hard to work on a team in storyboards, and that's because most likely your storyboards are too big. It's all in one file, or maybe it's only in one or two files. Today we're gonna to talk about refactoring your storyboard into a bunch of smaller storyboards, A, to make them more performant, and B, it'll make it easier to work with as a team. Let's get started. So as always, you need some context, so let's give a quick rundown of the demo project that I'm going to use. So basically I have this crazy large storyboard here. Uh, the center's around this tab bar controller that has four tabs at the bottom. Each of the tabs has a navigation controller with kind of like a screen flow, you know, with these green screens, blue screens, purple and pink. And that's basically a pretty simple project, not much code involved. In fact, there's probably gonna be no code in this tutorial. Um, but this is the sample project. This is an example of kind of a, a crazy storyboard. A good rule of thumb that I like to work with, which we'll revisit here later in the tutorial, is if I have, you know, more than three, four, five is stretching it view controllers on a single storyboard, I like to break it up into smaller storyboards. Now, like I said, that is a rule of thumb, that is personal preference, uh, it's a spectrum. So on one end of the spectrum, you have one giant, massive, crazy storyboard, which is not great. On the other end of the spectrum, some people will do one view controller gets its own storyboard and there's just so many storyboard files. So that is kind of the extremes. I like to be somewhere in the middle, like I said, about three to four view controllers on a storyboard. If it gets more than that, I like to break it up. But again, that's just rule of thumb, my personal preference. And to revisit why one giant storyboard is bad, like this one has like 15 view controllers on it. It takes forever to load, there'd be laggy. And plus when you're working on a team, uh, if you make a change to the storyboard and somebody else makes a change to the storyboard, now you get a merge conflict in the storyboard XML files and those can be a real pain in the butt. So breaking the storyboards down into smaller chunks makes it easier to work with as a team and your storyboards will be more performant. All right, let's, uh, let's refactor this thing. So the first thing I like to do is create a folder for all my storyboards. Now this is project organization. Again, this will be personal preference. This is just how I do it. Uh, so in the view hierarchy, uh, right click file, new group. And then I call this folder uh, storyboards, enter. And then I do a new file in here. Again, you can do command N, I'm just using the mouse for now. Uh, so you'll get your new files. Normally you're probably used to doing a Swift file or a Cocoa Touch class. If you scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see user interface and you're gonna see I have storyboard already highlighted. Hit next to create a brand new storyboard. Call it whatever you like. I'm gonna call mine uh, the color of basically the screens that I have up here. Now, when you're naming it, this could be like profile or onboarding or you know whatever flow you're making. So here I have a blank storyboard called green storyboard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create the rest of my storyboards, but you guys don't wanna watch me do that, so I'm gonna skip ahead. Okay, so as you can see on the left in my view hierarchy, I have my storyboards folder, my main storyboard, and then all my, my color storyboards. They're all blank right now, uh, except for main storyboard, obviously. Uh, so if you have an app with a tab bar like I have here, another good, again, rule of thumb, it's not absolute, but just a rule of thumb, is each one of these tabs at the bottom. So if you can see in my tab bar controller, I have, you know, favorites, recents, bookmark, search, like these should each be at the very least their own storyboard. And again, you could possibly break them down even further depending on how large each tab is. All right, so let's start doing that. First, we'll do this with our uh, favorites tab or, or the green uh, navigation controller up top. So the first thing I do is delete the segue coming from the tab bar controller to my flow up here, my, my green flow, we'll call it. So delete that segue, you can see the segue is gone. And if I scroll back down to my tab bar controller, now you see we only have three tabs. Don't worry, we'll fix that. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna cut and paste this flow from the main storyboard to the green storyboard. So I just click, and if you command click on these view controllers and then do command X, oh, they're gone, no big deal. Go to green storyboard, uh, I always click into it, command V, and then you paste them in there. But it's always weird. You never know where they get pasted because the storyboard is so zoomed in. But you can see in my hierarchy on the left here, I have them. So if I zoom out on the storyboard, okay, there they are, found them. Uh, scroll, get them centered, there they go. Now, anytime you have a new storyboard, you need your initial view controller for that storyboard. And that is whatever the first view controller on that storyboard is going to be. In our case, it's going to be this navigation controller. So if I click on the navigation controller, over in the upper right, make sure you're on this uh, inspector, the little down arrow looking thing. If you scroll down, look, look down about halfway, you see is initial view controller. You see me clicking it and unclicking it. And then you're gonna get this arrow on the left-hand side of the navigation controller to indicate it is the initial view controller. Now you're good to go. So we have our green storyboard all set up, separated, but 
we don't have the tab anymore. If I go back to the main storyboard, you see, you see even this takes a little bit to load. Uh, our green flow is gone. Uh, and we don't have a tab for it. So now this is the key to the whole thing. We use what's called storyboard reference. Now, uh, if you're still in Xcode 9, it's going to be in your object library in the lower right where my face is. But I'm in Xcode 10, so we're going to do Command Shift L to pull up the object library. Uh, you can see storyboard reference is right here. If it's not, you just start typing storyboard reference. So we're going to pull that out to the green, or I'm sorry, to where the green was. And then now we get our storyboard reference there. Zoom in a little bit so we can see it. And it's just this little guy. So if I click on it, over on the right, go to the inspector, you'll see I have a drop down. It says storyboard. Right now it says main, but I want this to be my green storyboard because this is what, where I moved everything. So storyboard green. Uh, I, want the, I want it to go to the initial view controller, the first one we want, so that's fine. And that's all I need to do. So now this is green. And then I'm going to put this, I'm going to actually move this down here because it's going to look much neater than this, this crazy, you know, spider web of segues and everything. So uh, now, if I want to get a tab here, I need to make what's called a relationship segue from the tab bar controller. So with my tab bar controller highlighted, control drag, just like you're dragging any normal segue, drag it to your storyboard reference, unclick, and then now you're probably used to doing like show or present modally. Here, because it's a tab bar controller, we want it to be a relationship segue. So hit relationship segue. And now you see I get my tab back. Uh, however, we're missing the you know favorites and the icon and everything. So we do have to reset that up. Uh, so if I go back to my green storyboard, uh, you can see this navigation controller needs a tab bar item. Now, if you look, when I copy and pasted it, I still have one. Uh, there's like a little disconnect here. Uh, this might not be the best way to do it. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I always just delete that ta uh, tab bar item, do command shift L into our object library. Again, if you're in Xcode 10, if you're in Xcode 9, it's gonna be in the lower right. And then I type tab bar, uh, item this is what you want here at the very bottom, the star tab or item, drag it onto my navigation controller item. And then I go ahead and for this one, obviously if you have your own custom tab bar, you do your typical tab bar stuff. But for this one, I'm just doing system favorites and there it is. So now I have my tab bar item and that will uh, persist throughout the, all the view controllers in this navigation controller and we're good to go there. So if I go back to my main storyboard, you see from my tab bar controller, uh, and it doesn't update here. You can update this uh, if you like on your own. It doesn't matter. But uh, my tab bar controller is now pointing to my storyboard reference of green and uh, everything should work. So let's go ahead and run this. So as you can see, recents is my first tab and that is my blue flow here. Uh, favorites was my green flow. So if I click on favorites, now I get my green flow here and I can click and go through the flow. So the storyboard reference is working. Uh, everything's good to go there. So that is the start of how you refactor the storyboard. Now I'm going to do the same thing for each of the other tabs, uh, but I'm gonna skip ahead because it's literally the same thing I just did for green. But I also wanna show you how to refactor when you're within the same navigation controller, right? Right now we're doing this uh, based on a tab bar. So it's a little bit different when doing it on a navigation controller. So let me finish refactoring this. We'll come back and do the navigation controller. All right, so we're all refactored here. My main storyboard, as you can see, is nothing but this tab bar controller. And as you can see, if I zoom in a little bit, I have references uh, pointing to each one of my storyboards that I refactored to. So this is much cleaner, much easier to work with, uh, main.storyboard. So now, uh, just to take a look, uh, here's my green storyboard, light blue. You can see these are much faster to load, purple and dark blue. So if I go back to my purple storyboard, you can see, uh, you know, this is four view controllers, five if you count the navigation controller. So this is getting on the edge of what I like, like it's too many for my liking. So what I want to do is I want to refactor out the pink view controllers to their own storyboard uh, and but stay within the same navigation controller. So let's just say like this is, you know, your login flow is the purple and then maybe your forgot password slash reset password flow is the pink. So, you know, that, that's a part, pretty common example. Um, so we want to move the pink ones to their own storyboard. So as you can see here on the left, I've already created a pink storyboard. So we're going to do the same thing here. Let's go ahead and delete this segue here to the pink. So that, that is coming from my next button, as you can see highlighted. So go ahead and delete that. And then just like before, command click these view controllers, command X to cut. Let's go to the pink storyboard and uh, command V to paste. And then we gotta zoom out to find out where they are. There they are, uh, zoom in. Okay, so cool. But now you see they're not in a navigation controller. And now I do wanna say that this is the initial view controller just like before. Um, however, because they're going to be segued from an existing navigation controller, they're automatically gonna be put into that one. So, so let's do that. So if I go back to the purple storyboard, uh, and then this next button, uh, just like before, well, I'm sorry, I need a storyboard reference. So let's pull that up from the object library.
drag a storyboard reference out here. Again, click on the storyboard reference. In the inspector, we get to choose what storyboard we're going to. We're gonna to go to the uh, pink storyboard. Cool, and then from the next button, uh, you just control drag to the pink. And then because we're in a navigation controller, um, we wanna do show segue, right? Remember last time from the tab bar, we were doing relationship segues, uh, and this is going to be a show. Now, if you were gonna do like the very first view controller in a navigation controller, you do what's called a root view controller segue, and uh, that's how you handle that. So let's do show here, and then now you see we get the segue to the uh, storyboard reference, and everything should still work fine. So let's go ahead and run this and see. All right, so if you've been paying attention, you're gonna notice that last time recents was first. So this order keeps changing. We'll talk about that in, in a little bit. Um, but basically, let's make sure this works. So hit next, yep, I can go through that. I have my recents, which is blue. Hit next, I have my bookmarks. Let's see if we go to the pink storyboard. Works perfectly, works great. And then we have search. Um, so back to why these are in potentially different orders. Let's go back to our main storyboard. Stop running this, main storyboard. Basically what determines the order of that is the order that you create these segues in. So if you don't like this current order, um, you just delete these segues and then create the segues in the order that you want it to show up. So let's try that. So let's go ahead and uh, delete, 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 delete. Cool, nothing. Now let's start creating our relationship segues. Let's say I wanted search first. I want a dark blue first, green last, purple second, and then light blue. It does, the order they're, they're laid out on the screen doesn't matter. It's the order that you uh, you know make the connections to. So let's create our segues here. Uh, dark blue. Uh, again, relationship segue is what you want when you're dealing with a tab bar controller. And relationship segue to purple. Relationship segue to light blue. And then finally to green. And we're Good, so let's go ahead and run this again, and it should be, search should be the first one, which is dark blue, then purple, light blue, etc. So yep, we got search the dark blue, then we got purple, then light blue, then green, just like we did. So just a little extra tidbit when dealing with tab bar controllers, the order you create the uh, relationship segues in determines the order of the tab bar. So that's it, not all that difficult, right? And if you're working with storyboards, especially on a team, refactoring your storyboard is an absolute must. Like that storyboard I showed in the beginning, you don't want that. That's so hard to work with. Break it down into a bunch of small storyboards and you'll be fine. All right, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I put out new videos all the time.